let us just open up the bread. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. Now the Lord Jesus Christ on the same night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us just partake together. Every day of this month, 
We will have every cause to be grateful to God. So let's watch out. When the testimonies comes, don't just sit on it. Share the testimony. Because it needs more testimonies will come. So as we are grateful, God will give us reasons to be more grateful to Him. Hallelujah. I want to talk about how to triumph and reign in your domain. Hallelujah. David Spence has turned my mic down. But I think you can still hear me clearly. Hallelujah. I think because of the background noise. How to triumph. Yes, thank you very much. How to triumph and reign in your domain. Hallelujah. And if I say this, our name is Royal Priesthood. And we're not just Royal Priesthood. And it's, just not, it's not just a name specific, specific to us alone as a church. But it's a name for all children of God. Because the Bible says it, we are a royal priesthood. So even people who are not members of this church can still claim to be royal priesthood. Because that's what God has made us. We are kings and priests, the Bible says. And so if we are kings and priests, can a king reign without a domain? No. Then that means we also have a domain. Or without a kingdom, if you want to call it a kingdom. So a king is meant to reign in his domain. Or to rule in his domain or his kingdom. So you and I as kings and priests, that means we have a domain. And it's not a domain, to, I know now, of course we have domain, IT domain, not that. But I'm talking about your domain, your circle of influence. When I talk about domain, because I know there are different definitions, so let me talk about the domain I'm talking about. Lest one of the children might think, oh, domain in IT. No. Domain is your area of territory, owned or controlled by a particular ruler or government. And so, because you are a king and I'm a king, this is our domain. Our domain, your domain is where God has put you. Where God has put you to tend. Just like Adam. God put Adam in the garden of Eden to tend the garden. That was Adam's domain. So your domain is where God has put you at a particular time. So if you are in a marriage, at that time your marriage is your domain in that circle. So where God has put you, if you are in a job, God has given you a job. That job at that time is your domain. It's where God has put you. You are in this church, you are a member of this church. This is your domain, where God has put you. In your home, your domain. So where God has put you at a particular time to either do something for him or be responsible for your life is your domain. You are in this country, the United Kingdom. You may not be Prince Charles or King Charles now, actually. You may not be the king of this country. But it's your domain. Your home is your domain. Where you are living is your domain. So because it's your domain, God has put you there to reign. God has put you there to rule in Genesis 13, 14 to 15. And the Lord said to Abraham, Lord, after the Lord had separated from him, lift up your eyes and see, look for the place where you are, northwards, eastwards, southwards, and westwards. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. That was Adam's Oh, sorry, um, Abraham's domain. Hallelujah. So where God has given you is your domain. I'm raising my voice because I want the children to be quiet at the back so that the adults can hear. So where God has put you at a particular time is your domain. And so if God had put Adam in the garden of Eden to tend, and Adam decided not to tend because the enemy came to tend Adam, and pushed him out of his domain, if not for restoration by the blood of Jesus. And then that means the enemy tries to contend with us in our domain. That means it's not everyone who will rule in their domain. It's people who are ready to fight against the attack of the enemy. Who are ready to say, whatever comes my way, I refuse because I've been made a king and a priest and I have to rule and dominate in this domain. It is such people who will truly rule in the domain. Because we know that we are fighting a rascal here on earth who is the devil. He does not want you and I to reign in our domain. He does not want you to be blessed in your domain. He does not want you to be successful in your marriage. He does not want you to be successful in the work of your hands. He does not want you to be successful in your education. 
He will fight with everything in him just to make sure that you are not a king in your domain. Just to make sure that he contends with you and you are not able to reign in your domain. He will do everything in his power to make sure he kicks you out of the garden of Eden like he did in the place of Adam. He's still the same Satan operating. The same method he used then, he's still using now to keep people out of their domain, to fight in people's marriages, to fight in people's homes, to begin to affect people's health in every way, just to make sure that we are not living to expectation, just to make sure that you and I cannot stand as kings and priests in our domain, but the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. And so, when we know we have a domain, how do we actually, how do we triumph, or how do we reign in our domain? We know we are faced with different oppositions, us to look at uh, the, somebody who did this, a king, an example of a king who did this in the Bible and who truly reigned in his domain. If you turn your Bibles, please, to Second Chronicles chapter 34. Now, this story is in Second Chronicles chapter 34 to 35. It's also in Second Kings 22 to 23. So I'm going to read from Second Chronicles 34. I'm not going to read everything because of our time. But I'm going to read some parts of it and then we'll talk about it. Hallelujah. As God gives us the grace. Thank you, Jesus. God is trading a heart of stone for a heart of flesh. God is opening up someone's heart to begin to believe the word much more. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name because you give us a heart of flesh that will be responsive to your words, that will be responsive to your voice. Thank you, Father. In 2 Chronicles 34, I believe we are there. The Bible says, Josiah was eight years old. I'm reading from verse 1. When he became king, when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem, where he was made king, where God had put him, his domain, where God has planted him. As God has planted you in the country you are in now, as God has planted you in the home you are in now, in the marriage you are in now, in the job you are in now. So this boy was eight years old, a young age to be king. But it was put, a lot of responsibility was put in his hands. Just like some of us find ourselves doing things that we may think are too young for this. I remember when I got to this country at age 21, I was there, when I got to this country in 1996. So I was looking, I thought, oh, I'm too young to pay my school fees, because I paid my school fees. I'm too young to be living alone, because really, where I come from, I know in this country, 18 people have left their homes, but where I come from, you still stay with your parents until you are ready to get married. Even if you find a job, you still stay. Because in fact, as a woman, if you leave your parents home, no, no man will come and... I don't know if... I think things have changed a bit, to be honest, from those days. Because now, civilization has come and people really... Every man is looking for a wife who will make them. Now. <laughs> who will make them. In those days, women are looking for, 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 for men. For, for men. They do exactly. Now. But men are looking for wives who will make them. So they go and start looking for the wives of working in oil company, already living, already probably living in those big houses. Before, I used to scare men, but not, not anymore. So in those days, you know, people would not want to leave their parents' homes because no guy would ask you to marry them because they believe, the, what are they adding to you? You have everything. You know, of course, the, the background I come from. So coming to this country and having to, you know, at age 21 and having to pay my own school fees and having to live alone and having to, you know, do everything, pay my bills and all of those things. I found that it was it was hard for me. I felt it was I was too young to be doing it. But of course the Lord saw me through. The Lord helped me in all of it. And so you may find yourself thinking that you are too young for where you are. But if God has put you there as your domain, then it's your domain. You may think you are too young for the job you are doing. Or you are less qualified for the job you are doing. But if God has put you there, then it's your domain. You may think you don't have what it takes. 
Or you may think you got married too young. Maybe I should have gotten married at age 30, you know. I wouldn't have been going through these challenges. No, let not that be the excuse. Because if God has put you there, if God has allowed you to get married at that age, that means that's your domain where you need to rule and reign. And so anything that comes to contradict the ruling and reigning in that domain is not God, it's the devil. So it has to be kicked out. It has to be kicked out and you have to take dominion in your domain. So in the domain that God has put you, whether in a job or in a home or in the a, a, a streets, for example, because people contend with some people on their streets. You find the next door neighbor, oh, I remember then, I used to live in a flat years ago in this country. And the lady that was living downstairs, I don't know for what, I don't know how she knows anytime I'm waking up and praying. I don't know. I had tried to keep my voice very low. After the first day, she knocked my door and was crying. Because was, I was shocked when I saw the woman knocking my door in the morning as I was praising God, worshiping in the morning. Because of course, as my custom was where I come from, Nigeria, I was used to praising God loud in the morning. And then suddenly, bang, 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 then she knocked. I saw tears in her face. I said, ah, I'm disturbing her. And that was why she was crying. I said, I was sorry. I was shocked, even if I was disturbing. I didn't think I could be disturbing to the extent of someone crying. I said, no, that must be a strange spirit. It can't be an adult crying just because. I said, I was sorry, I didn't mean to be a nuisance. And sincerely, I didn't think I was going to disturb any neighbors. So what I did was the next day, and days after, I started to be more quiet, more gentle. Because she couldn't stop me from praising God. But at the same time, I started to be more gentle in it. Because I also didn't want that episode of crying again. I couldn't stand it. I was a young girl as well. I could not stand a woman coming to cry. What have I done? And then, I found that even when I was... That day I was singing quietly. I heard the knock again. And I saw the tears. Ha! It didn't help there. I thought that any time I was going on the streets, this woman would turn her face away. And she was like she hated me. I knew that, no, this is my domain. You can't stop me from praising God in my own flat. I'm paying for this flat. It's my domain. This is more than, I'm not putting on the loud music now. I'm not shouting. And I, I lie not. All of these things I'm saying now be wrong to be, to, be, to be lying on the pulpit. This was exactly how it happened. <laughs> Ah, this is my domain. I said, no, I have to take charge. It's my domain. So I started to pray. God, ah, in fact, my voice is going. I was saying to God, I can't sing anymore because I've not been singing loud enough. Lord, this woman needs to move. She needs to move. If she won't let me worship, she needs to move. Because I'm not disturbing, I'm singing quietly. But even the quietly, she, as soon as I start singing, like she will knock the door. So I knew that, no, it's on spirits. Do you know what? It didn't last more than a month after I started praying. I just suddenly saw nobody was knocking my door anymore. I went to look downstairs. She had moved. She had moved. I just said, glory to God. It was much more than that. So, things come to contend with you in your domain. Disallow it. Don't allow the enemy to push you out of your domain because it's coming to, to, to bracadore you. Let me use that word. <laughs> or, to, or to threaten you or to make you feel less don't allow him to push you out of your domain so this king I've moved out from the bible now Josiah so he was in his domain in verse 1 he became king and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem verse 2 and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father David he did not turn aside to the right or, or to the left. See how someone was ruling in their domain. He did what was right in the Lord. Verse 3. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, children can you hear, young people, this man was young. He didn't say, I am young. I'm too young to pray. I'm too young to attack this thing. I'm too young. I'm too young to take my stand. He didn't say that. Whilst he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father, David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places. So he didn't just seek God, he was purging. 
He was taking away everything that didn't represent God out of his domain. He was taking the jujus, everything, out of his domain. Now, the domain now has new owner, new king, new territory. So he was purging the place. Every carved images, wooden images, all the molded images, he purged them out of his domain because he needed to reign and rule. Verse 4, they broke down the altars of Baals in his presence. And the incense altars, which were above them, he cut down. The wooden images, the carved images, the molded images, he broke into pieces, made dust of them, scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. So he did all of these things in his domain, cleared them of idols. If we turn to verse 8, because I said it's quite long, so you can read it in your time. In the eighth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the temple, he sent Shephan, the son of Azaliah, Masiah, the son of the city, and Johan, the son of Johas, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. See another thing he did. He not only broke the false idols, he not only destroyed the, bear, the altars of Baal, he now started to build the house of God. He now started to repair, he now started to restore the house of the Lord. Because now power has changed hands. Now the king has a new king, the, the domain has a new king. So he built what mattered to him. Verse 18 to 22. And Shephan the scribe told the king, saying, Ilkiah the priest had given me a book, and Shephan read it before the king. Verse 19. Thus it happened. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes because he was being told how God was going to punish the, the city for the past, for the past mistakes that they had made. So he was sorry. He tore his clothes. Verse 20. Then the king commanded Ilkiah, Haikam, the son of Shephan, Abdon, the son of Micah, Shephan, the scribe, and Haziah, a servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me. Verse 21. And for those who are left in Israel and Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do according to all that is written in this book. Verse 22. So Ilkiah and those the king had appointed went to Uda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Toka. We see a place here where a woman was a prophetess who, who the king turned to. Toka, the son of Osrash, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her to that effect. Verse 33. Then Josiah removed all the abominations from all the country that belonged to the children of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel diligently serve the Lord their God all the days that they did not all the days they did not depart from following the Lord God of their fathers. And I'll quickly jump to 2 Chronicles 35, 16 to 18. So just flip your Bible next page. Flip your Bible next page. You know, I said to you the story is in 34 to 35. So read the rest in your time. Flip your Bible to 2 Chronicles 35, 16 to 18. So all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover, to offer the burnt offering on the altar of the Lord according to the command of King Josiah. And the children of Israel who were present kept the Passover at that time and the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. There had been no Passover. Listen to this, please. There had been no Passover kept in Israel like that since the days of Samuel the prophet. And none of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as Josiah kept. With the priests and the Levites, all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He left a landmark. No Passover was, was, was kept that way. Just because someone chose to act the right way. Someone chose to triumph in their domain. So let us, from this story, we can derive how did he do it. Because these things were written for our examples. So we can also do it. And we can also reign in our domain. Number one, what, how did Josiah triumph in his domain? How do we triumph in our domain? How do we reign when challenges have come? How do we stick 
to what is to, to what God wants us to do, regardless of what the enemy is do, do, doing, regardless of adverse winds that are blowing. How do we triumph in our domain? Number one, make righteous living priority in your domain. That's very important. So in your area of influence, in your home, in your marriage, in your job, in anything you, to do, you lay your hands to do, or where you find yourself, where God has put you, make righteous living priority. And that involves, it involves avoiding idolatry like Josiah did and anything that would displease God. Because for us, it may not be bowing down, necessarily bowing down to an idol, you know. But there are other ways where we can idolize, uh, idolize things. There are other ways where we can allow things to take over our lives. Even jobs that are meant to actually bless us can take over our lives sometimes. Or marriages that are meant to be a blessing to us can take us away from the presence of God sometimes. If we allow it, you know. So make righteous living. Righteousness just means doing right. Priority in your domain. During Bible study, Sister Tola was talking about how she chose to tell the truth. Even though it looked like if she told a lie, she would they would they, uh, she would be justified or, or they would let her go. But she chose to tell the truth. She may not remember, she has also given a, an example, a similar story. She has given a similar example here. When she hit someone's car in on her estate, or she scraped someone's car, and the person wasn't there. Do you know what my sister did? <laughs> I would have run away, isn't it? <laughs> she went to knock the lady's door and said, I'll just, I'll just eat your car. She wrote the place, she said, she wrote the place number down. <laughs> and she went to and she went to confess her sin. The person wasn't there. She, she went to confess. And you know what happened? Again, this person said, Because you have come to tell me the truth, I will let you go. You can imagine. So sometimes people act against how they should act. Sometimes we tell lies thinking we are trying to cover up. We don't know that if we tell the truth, God can still help us and save us out of the calamity. And of course, that was what happened today for her. And it had happened again before. And I'm thinking, this is my sister. I want to be like you. Hallelujah. So make righteous living priority in your domain. Live right. Don't be the one who will forge a figure in your workplace. They put you in charge of finances. Don't go and forge a figure. Don't be the one. This is your domain. This is the job God has given you. Let righteous living be your priority. If it's your marriage as well, make it right there. Do the right things. Do the right things. So in your domain, and you know your domain, you know your area of influence, you know where God is, has put you. You know the area where you are probably experiencing challenge at the moment. You know where you want God to visit you. That's the area where you should look at now. Number one, make righteous living priority in that area where you need a visitation. Number two, seek God on every issue. Every issue. That was what Josiah did. The Bible says he sought the Lord. In 2 Chronicles 34 verse 3. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek God of his father David. In the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places. So, Josiah, he didn't say, I'm too young, you know. They are hitting me anyhow. They are bullying me in school. You know, that. no, he didn't say that. He decided to take a stand in his domain. And he started to seek the Lord. He decided to say, God, I'm not going to allow you. This is my domain. I will seek you on what you want me to do. How do I handle this situation? Now, this exam is too much for me. Now, this lecturer is giving me hard, uh, hard times. Now, I have this job to cope with. How do I go about it? So he sought the face of the Lord in his domain. So he didn't just say, I'm too young. So seek God over that issue where you are experiencing challenges, where you believe that you need a touch or you need a change. And it could be over ministry. How do I go about it? This ministry you've committed under me, where do I do? Starts from what is in your hands. Starts from what you have. Starts from what the Lord has given you. Begin to seek God. How do I go about this God? Show me. So, in the domain where God has put you, seek God. Or you may be also in this church. How do I serve? What department do I serve in? Seek God in your domain. Because you want to have an impact or make an impact. Another thing he did, which will be number three, is he pushed Judah and Jerusalem. So, number three, humble yourself before God and ask God to purge you of pride or any careless words or doings. That will be my third point. But ask God to purge you. Remember that the Lord hears the prayer of the tender-hearted and the humble. 
Bible says in Psalm 51 verse 17, the sacrifices are of God are a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. God will not despise a broken spirit and a contrite heart. So seek God in your domain. How do we do this? Practically speaking, let me not just say what's just written down. Practically speaking, how do I humble myself in my home or in my marriage? How do I purge myself in my work? How do I, that means take away everything that does not please God. That just means search inwards. See, how am I contributing to this problem? What can I do to make it right? And you come before God and repent. So Josiah purged the whole place. He removed the idols. He purged it because now a new king is reigning. So the same way, open yourself before God. Be open to correction. Be open to areas where you need to throw away things. Be open to areas where you can improve. Our brother Nikon was saying in um, the Bible study, how when he first got married, things were happening. And he didn't realize. You can Im imagine if he didn't humble himself for a change. It's when you humble yourself, that's when you are open to a change. He humbled himself and he thought, look, I'm not doing it right. Help me to help this woman. And as he humbled himself and he started to do it, he found that his wife started to change. Initially, he thought he could change his wife. He thought it was his wife who had a problem, who needed to change. He didn't know that by humbling himself, God would in change his wife. And that's how God works. When you humble yourself and you say, Lord, I look inward. I'm not pointing my finger at the next person. I want to reign in this domain. I want to take charge. I want things to be all right. I want things to be corrected. I want to do well in this course. How can I do it? Let me give myself three hours every day to study it. Just look inwards. See what you need to purge yourself of. Let me purge myself of these things. Let me spend some more time praying and seeking you, God. Lord, maybe if I reduce the time I watch television and focus more on some prayer and study of the world, maybe I'll be more effective in ministry. Look inward. Set yourself. Maybe if I reduce the time on WhatsApp or on Facebook and I use this time to begin to study the world, maybe the dead will be rising by now when I pray. You understand? Look inward. Look at ways you need to change. What is in you that you need to purge so you can reign in your domain? Number four, quickly. Restore build, or build worship in your domain. And that's very important. Now, when you have paused yourself, when you have paused your domain, now the domain has new authority, new power. Restore worship. Oh, Josiah did this. Let's be a worshiper. Be someone who is grateful. And of course, this is a month of gratitude. Be grateful. Be grateful to God. Rejoice at all times. Restore worship. Let it be part of your lifestyle in your domain. Number five. I'm trying to speed things up now. I realize that time is fast gone. Know the Bible so you can live by it. Commit yourself to living out the word of the truth. Very important. This was what Josiah did. When, because that was what helped him to reign. He committed to living the word that was written. He said, Elkiah, go and bring the book. Can you tell me? What, where have we gone wrong? Can God forgive us? And he committed himself to worship. Not only that, he committed the other people, the people under him. So as many as your children are, you can command them. They are still under you. Tell them, look, in this house, we are serving Jesus. In this house, we say 9 o'clock is prayer. So shall it be. Nobody should be on the internet. Everybody turn off your TV. Come on, let us pray. You know, this is your domain. Take charge. Take charge. Know the Bible. Live by it. Commit your, 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 your faith to, to your children. Pass it on to your children. And they will pass it on to their children's children. Because God blesses those who pass it. God entrusted you with that domain. Because he knows you will pass it on to your children. So know the Bible and live by it. Number six, be thorough in your commitment. And this is my last, last point. To make an impact. Be thorough. Make sure you have a mind to make an impact. Don't just come and leave this world and no one heard of you. No. Don't just come and pass by, come to Royal Priesthood, go to another, another church around the road, and no one knows that you have visited. Leave a landmark. Leave a landmark. For example, our brother, Pastor Gabriel, is not here today. How many noticed that he was not here? You see? I noticed, because there was no keyboard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise is pointing the finger. So, leave a mark. Let people miss you. Let them say, where? Ah. David's place is not here today, no guitar. Oh, Sister Tola is not here today. Oh, no wonder these students are making it. 
Live an impact. In your domain, live an impact. When you leave a job, let them be looking for you. Let the director say, where are you going? Can I raise your pay? Brother is not here today. That happened to him. He was leaving the job. And the director suddenly called him. Where are you going? And he told them, can we raise your pay? We want to, we want to keep you. Because they have made an impact. We want to keep you. He said, oh, if you know how much they are giving me in that place, can you meet it? When he told them how much money they were giving him, they opened their mouth. They couldn't raise it. They couldn't meet it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let people feel your impact in your domain. If you are married, when you are not in, let your wife say, oh, my husband. You, did, you went to work today, you took too long ago. Nobody to help me. Nobody to help me change the light bulb. Let them feel your impact. Oh, 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 oh my wife. They are not here today. You know, I felt like really eating, really eating little good pounded jam. You were not here to help me. Let somebody feel your impact. It's your domain. Let someone miss you. Oh, oh you're, you're not in your, ah, your, your, your child. Mommy, oh, I miss you today, mommy. No, I knocked my leg on, on something. Nobody to rub it for me. Let somebody miss you. Have an impact in your domain. So everywhere you go, have an impact. If you're in a job, have an impact. You're serving in a ministry, have an impact. God has committed your ministry to your heart, have an impact. A heart to reach out to your generation. Have a heart. Don't just pass by this world and no one can hear your voice. No one knows that you came. No. No. Have an impact. Have an impact. And this was what Josiah did. Second Chronicles 35 18, which was why I said we should read that. They said there had not been any Passover kept in Israel like that since the days of Samuel the prophet. None of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover. As Josiah kept. That was a man who made impact. And how did he make impact? Because he chose to reign in his domain. He chose to triumph in his domain. He chose to put righteousness in his domain. He chose to seek God in his domain. He chose to restore worship in his domain. He chose to know what the Bible says, what the word of God says in his domain. Like Solomon, he chose to seek God for wisdom on how to do things. You may be confused about how to do things or confused about where you are going or confused about choices to make, it is time to begin to seek God. This was what Solomon did as well. He sought God when he was put in the domain to rule and rule as king. God, how can I reign? How can I rule? How can I train these children? I have three of them, I have two of them. They have different personalities. How can I guide them the right way? That's your domain. Where God has put you, what he has blessed you with. And don't allow anything that may want to push you out of your domain. Don't allow it. God will not push you out. It will be from the adverse side, which is the enemy. So stand your feet and refuse to be pushed out. Put righteousness first. Seek God. Humble yourself. Restore worship. Be a Bible scholar. Commit your heart to the Lord. Be committed to make an impact. And God indeed will work on your behalf. Let's stand to our feet and begin to pray. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Set your hearts. Oh God, try me, the psalmist says. Search my heart if there is any wicked way in me and purge me. Lord, we pray for the grace to rule. Begin to pray for the grace to reign in your domain. Marco Sato Yebro Santo. Begin to pray, God, Lord, that challenge that I'm going through, I go through it no more. For I reign, O oh God, as I put you first. I reign and rule as I seek you first. Begin to speak to God. God, I will triumph in this. I will triumph in the place you have put me. I will triumph in my education. I will triumph in my job. I will triumph in my marriage. I will triumph in my home. I will triumph in my studies if you are a student. I will triumph as a child. I will triumph as a father, as a mother. God, in my domain, I will reign. With the help of your spirit, I will reign. Lord, help me, help me, help me to be wise. Give me wisdom to reign. Give me wisdom to rule. Give me wisdom to dominate where you have put me. Thank you, Father. Marco Seto Yebro Santo. Jebro Seto Yeka Santo. Let's raise our hands to the Lord. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Marco Shoto Raka Santo Yebro Santo. Come on, begin to ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. All of these things are not possible in our power nor our might. But by the Spirit, God makes it easy. Ask for the help of the Spirit in areas where you have struggled to make all of this living a standard in your life, in your home, in your job, in your marriage. Ask for His help. 
ask for his help, ask for his help. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help. Where have we faulted? We ask for your help. Lord, help us and help us to do what we should do. Help us to triumph indeed. Help us to reign indeed. Like Josiah, let us put you before everything. Like Solomon, we seek you for wisdom. Wisdom to be parents. Wisdom to triumph in our education. Wisdom to triumph in our homes and marriages. Wisdom to live right. Give us wisdom to be good parents to our children. Wisdom to serve you. Wisdom in ministry. Release upon us. Wisdom to know what to do. We receive, O oh God, this day. From heaven we receive. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's be seated in his presence as we prepare ourselves for offering. Hallelujah.